Chapter 21. Say hello. The war officially ended in June, around the time we first saw some of the refugees in town. Our government was giving the refugees an allowance. Lucas said it was like pocket money. $20 a week for adults and 5 for children. To buy things like clothes, toiletries, travel fares and extra food. The officials in charge at the safe haven had started arranging a private bus service so the refugees could come into town and have a look around and spend the money they were given. A whole bunch of shops on Ocean Beach Road did things to celebrate and make them feel welcome. The Athenaeum Cinema sign said, Refugees Welcome, Monthly Free Movie. The local bakery made Anzac biscuits especially and offered them free to anyone from the safe haven who popped in. Max Cycles Bike Shop even started a bike share. Refugees could pay $5 to borrow a push bike for a week so they could get to Sorrento and back to the quarantine station. About 40 minutes right away. Aiden's Parents Cafe, the pram stop, was just about the only shop on Ocean Beach Road that hadn't put out a welcome sign. But we didn't see any refugees in town in those first few weeks. Luca said it was partly because they were scared. The government had told them that if they left the safety of the haven, it couldn't guarantee protection and support, and so the refugees stayed right there, afraid to leave. And then, only weeks after they arrived, news broke that the war was over. NATO has called off its 11-week air war against Serbia following the beginning of the withdrawal of Serb troops from Kosovo, the newsreader said. Sam looked from the car radio to Annika in the driver's seat. Does that mean they're going home, even though they're only just got here? It's not quite as simple as that, Annika said. Both sides may say it's over, but it might not be. There's still lots of violence over there and military everywhere. Plus, there's also not a whole lot for these people to return to. No law and order, destroyed homes. We were in the car that Tuesday after school, heading to the supermarket, while Luca was volunteering again. Sam and I had taken turns telling Annika what Mr McMillan had told Aiden about how the refugees could have gone home weeks ago, but they wouldn't because they had a good thing going here and would bleed Australia of all its good intentions. We saw Annika roll her eyes in the rearview mirror and heard her mutter something under her breath before she cleared her throat to talk to us properly. <coughs> That's all well and good for Aidan's father to say, but I'm sure he'd feel differently if it was his family choosing between staying here in safety or going back to a bombed out city that could still come under attack. Annika put the indicator on and swung us into the car park, but before we got out of the car, she awkwardly tried turning her body in the seat to look at Sam and me. Don't go telling Luca every bit of word vomit that comes out of Mr McMillan's mouth, okay? Sam and I smirked when Annika said that, and she did the same. I know, I know. You shouldn't disrespect your elders, especially not your friend's parents. Understand? Sam and I both nodded. Mr McMillan can... <sighs> well... Annika sighed and fidgeted in her seat. He can be a bit of a gossip and run his mouth without caring what other people think or how they'll react or even what the full story is. Then a little quieter, Annika added. I can just imagine what he thinks of me and Luca. But I didn't have to imagine. I knew. I knew because Aiden was forever inviting Jed and Kira around to his house after school, but never me. He didn't make a big deal about it, but I'd asked Jed the other day and his neck had gone bright red and he scratched at it while avoiding my eyes. What? What did Aiden say? I asked. Did I do something wrong? Jed shook his head. Nah, nothing like that. It's just... I yanked on the strap of his backpack then, making him stumble back and sort of stop with me so I could raise my eyebrow at him. Or try to. I wasn't as good as Mr. Curry. All right, all right, Jed huffed. His dad reckons Luca and Annika having a baby together isn't... Jed waved his hands trying to find the words. It isn't a good thing because they're not married. I didn't know what to say to that, so I stalked off and made Jed run to catch up with me. Sam was way ahead of us by then, and I made Jed swear not to say anything, which he hadn't. Standing in the supermarket aisle, I was still lost in my thoughts of what Annika had said and the gossip that Aiden's dad was spreading, when Sam suddenly tugged sharply on my sleeve. What? I said, and turned to see him, only to, to see exactly what he was staring at. A little girl about his age, standing in the middle of the cereal aisle with her mouth hanging open and eyes just as wide. She was one of them a refugee from the safe haven. For one thing, she wasn't in uniform, even though school had just got out. Instead, she was wearing a black tracksuit top and bottoms and really old scuffed runners, and her brown hair was sticking out all over like she needed a haircut and a brush. For another, she was excited to be at the supermarket, one of the most boring places on earth. 
Three more people rounded the corner, two women wearing headscarves and another little girl in a matching tracksuit who looked like the first one's little sister. The adult seemed a little worried, but the two girls were practically vibrating with excitement and then they st started dancing right there in the aisles. They grabbed each other's hands and started twirling and spinning and giggling until they turned, twirled and spun a little too fast and knocked over a display of cereal boxes. One of the women scolded them immediately, grabbed one of each girl's wrists and told them off until they looked like they were about to cry. Sam, Fred, go help them! I turned around when Annika said that and she wasn't looking at the refugee family or the mess they'd made. She was turned towards the other customers in the supermarket, who had stopped what they were doing and were frowning at the family or shaking their heads as they walked away. Now, please, Annika said. Sam and I hurried over. We both smiled awkwardly while the women kept talking in hushed, angry words to the two girls. The girls stared at us, their eyes still round and curious, as we crouched down to stack the boxes back up. Annika walked up with our trolley as the family of four kept talking in whispers. Hello, Mirdita. Suddenly, all four of them were looking at Annika. First with those same round eyes of shock, and then it was like a light went on, and the two adults broke out into big smiles. Meredita. Meredita, they each said. Then the little girls squirmed out of the hold of one of the women still had on them to shyly come over and start helping us stack the cereal. Sam and I quietly and a little sheepishly said, Meredita, trying to copy what everyone else had said. The little girls giggled at us and kept stacking. Um, uh, I'm sorry, that's all I know, Annika said to the two women. Hello, Meredita. The two women spoke rapidly to the children and the old one with the sticky out hair looked at Annika over her shoulder. Thank you, we are sorry, she said, the words rolling off her tum tongue with tumbling R's. Annika, Sam and I must have looked at her in shock because she giggled again. Then they all said something else rapidly. Little English, one of the women explained, pointing to her own chest. And then she smiled down at the girl and said, more English. Do you learn in school? Annika asked the girl who stood up once the stacking was done. The display wasn't as fancy as before, but at least all the cereal boxes were off the floor. The girl nodded. And what's your name? Majime, the girl said. And who's this? Annika asked, nodding and smiling to her sister, who was now standing shyly behind Merjame and peeking around her shoulder. Arta. Merjame and Arta, it's nice to meet you. Annika said. This is Fred and Sam. She pointed at us in turn, then she smiled at the women. And is this your mother and... Mema, Merjame said, pointing to one of the women. Emta, she added, pointing to the other and then turning back to smile at us. Your mother and... Aunt? Annika guessed, and Measure May nodded proudly. Well, tell your Mema and your Empta that we hope to see them around town soon. As soon as Annika had finished speaking, Measure May was quickly translating. Her mum and aunt smiled so widely at all of us, it made a smile back wider too. Felimendrit, the aunt said, and Measure May translated. Thank you. We left them in the cereal aisle, and once we were far enough away, Sam asked, can we tell Luca about that? Annika smiled. Yes, this we will tell Luca about.